uh, on camera a couple times during the Swiss. We saw him against defeat narrowly defeated Goblin's deck. We uh, also saw him, yeah, we saw him narrowly defeated Goblin's deck earlier on camera. Uh, and now we are seeing him play against Corbin Rudnick, Belcher player on your right. Uh, due to seeding, Chris Funk will be on the play this game. Well, that's unfortunate for Corbin. It does give, well, it's, it's unfortunate because it gives Chris Funk access to Days. Which, otherwise, you know, Days and then Apostle and Brainstorm. So if you kind of virtually increase the size of his hand. Corbin Rudnick, according to uh, our reports out on the floor, only a month playing Magic the Gathering and came to this tournament the easiest thing to do is count. Yeah. Count how much mana you have. And uh, yeah, already already in the top four, so <laughs> great. <laughs> you must like this game, you know. You know, <laughs> it's one of those things. Sometimes all it takes is a good um, early experience to get you hooked for a really long time. Yeah. I know um, my girlfriend really doesn't like board games very much, but... She played Dominion and won it the first time she played it. So she likes Dominion. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Chris is keeping. Both players are keeping. Okay. Chris Funk starts out cracking a fetch land, going to 19. Some Bree and Misty Rainforest. He's going to go get an Underground Sea. Possibly gets to Thought. Is he going to get a chance to Thought Seize here before the action starts? That would be brutal. Thought Seize is a good Looks card. Looks like it. And Inquisition of Kozilek. All right. Let's see what... What has Corbin kept? How good of a how good of a hand is it? All right, empty the Warren. So oh, spirit. All right, all right. Let's try it again. He just throws all the cards at him. Empty land grant, street wraith, manamorphos, ritual, petal, spirit guide. So he has turn one, play, cy cycle a card, pitch a card, play everything, make elves. I think it's twelve elves, right now. 12 goblins? 12 goblins, yeah. 12 goblins is his turn one. And to be fair, <laughs> you can't take the... You can't take the Empty the Warrens here with this Inquisition. I mean, if Chris has a daze or a force of will, Corbin's dead. <laughs> but I think Corbin's just going to draw a cycle and just go for it. Why not? <laughs> Every turn just increases the chance for Chris Funk to do something scary. Yeah. I mean, if this land grant gets countered, you know, if he, if he, if he, ha if he has a force with this, it's, it's done. Yeah, do you know what do. I'm actually picturing? Is that when they were looking at each other's deck lists, Corbin was just talking with his friends. <laughs> He's like, so if he, yeah, takes yeah. The, if he takes the ritual, actually, one, two, three. No, he can still build up to the correct amount of mana. I believe he can still build up to four. Yeah. Land grants, one. Petals, two. Spirit guides, three. The other ritual's four. Yep. Okay, let's see if he can count, and let's see if Chris has anything else in his hand that matters. I can hope he just has, hope he doesn't have something like Engineered Explosive. He doesn't actually have a sweeper, so the goblins will almost certainly kill him. Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal's one. Land He's showing Grant, Land Grant is two, and he, and he drew... The hey, he drew the exact card that was taken from him, I think. The Wraith is already cycled. Oh, the Wraith's already cycled, so he's drawn two more rituals. So, one, two, it's going to be seven spells. One, two, three, four, seven spells this turn. Or no, six spells. I think we're going to see the days right here. Wow. On the land grant. That's not enough. Days on land grant doesn't stop it. That actually just increases the storm, doesn't it? Well, as long as Corbin plays it right. Remember, he's a new player. Yeah, I mean, if Corbin just lets it get countered, pitch a spirit guide, ritual, 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 empty the warns, that days hurt more than it helped. He decides to pay for it with the Elder Spirit Guide. All right, that's fine. Same difference. Same, same thing. Same thing both ways. He gets a Taiga out of his deck. The one Taiga, the only land in his deck, has been granted. <laughs> and he's got to hope that yeah, Chris doesn't have the Force of Will, which it doesn't look like he does. There it is. I found it. <laughs> yeah. And Chris is going to go for the rest of it. And that actually casts land grants. So that counts towards storm. So we have three storm now. Land for turn. And Goodbye, pedal. Four storm. Anything? Nope. Five storm. <laughs> 
six storm. Uh, five red mana. Oh, magic. And, make, and he's going to concede. Make, 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 make 14. Game. Chris is already, Chris already shuffling. That's it. Corbin Red, okay. Corbin Red, Nick up one game to zero over Chris Funk. Belcher. So, out of the board, Corbin is going to board nothing. <laughs> well, before we go to that, let's talk about people oh, right. that can win. So, a reminder again, we've already announced this not so long ago, but in order to win six free months of Star City Games Premium, our semifinal prize for our premium giveaway, you need to tweet. Right over here, you can see that hashtag SCG Premium, right. and you answer correctly Matthias's amazing trivia yeah. question. If so, you do so, and you have you. that hashtag, then one lucky person out of that will be selected to get six free months of right. premium. And in the finals, it's better. the same prize is actually increased up to a Gen Con badge. All right. Okay. So our questions are, these three are all about the From the Vaults realms. Um, if you know the cards in it, you should be able to get most of these. We're looking for another card that has been confirmed reprinted in From the Vaults realms. This is an EDH staple, for the, or commander, so whichever way you call it, uh, staple. It is... It is shares a name with a legendary land from Legends proper. Um, so we are looking for the name of, well, either the one from Legends or the one that's being reprinted in From the Vault. Okay, you're realms. gonna need to make this question more clear. I haven't understood what you've asked. Okay, we are looking for the name of the land that is in From the Vault realms. Okay. And this land is a very popular commander card, and it also flavorfully share. Matter is, it flavorfully shares a name with a legendary with a. a a land from the, the set Legends. Okay, I'm still not exactly sure what you're asking. We want the name of the card. It has the exact same name as a Legends card? Very, si there very we similar. There we go, very Matthias. There we go, Matthias. Very similar name. You need to make sure okay. the question is, very is clear. Name. So I'm going to try to re-ask this question okay, a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Okay, what, tell me if I got this right. Sure. What from the vault land, is this so yes. far? Yes. What? Um, what from the vault land is a card whose name is similar to an awesome Legends land, mm -hmm. and it is popular in Commander slash EDH. Yes. Is that, okay, That's, I just wanna make yes. sure I got it right. Absolutely. Okay. okay. All right, well, we'll bring you back to our, back to our game. Sorrow's our Path? Oh wait, that's the dark. Okay. Yeah. Um, that card's not popular. It's no not popular. <laughs> um, Bleeding Gums Murphy was never a popular character. Okay, back to our match underway. We have, Bug trying to find some answers here to Storm. Um, to Belcher. So we're going uh, well, sure to, well, the answer is to, well, he had two hate cards there. It was an Inquisition and plus a Daze, and it turned out to not be enough. And essentially, he just has to hope he has an opening hand that can compete better than that. You have to assume that Corbin's going to try to go off from when Corbin's got to be pretty excited <laughs> here. I mean, Corbin, he looks pretty excited. Definitely. Chris Funk on the left, hoping for a better um, opener in terms of being able to interact with Chris. You would have thought that Inquisition plus Days would have been enough to get things going, but it didn't even get there. So, uh, Chris out of the board, what did we decide? He has two spell pierces, which almost certainly come in. Um, he may want to board in his three surgical extractions. Now, I'm going to say this as someone who does not like boarding in surgical extraction at all, most of the time, because there's so many cards in his deck. First, he has a lot of dead cards in his deck. Uh, Diabolic Edict, Dismember, Go for the Throat, um, which those cards are pretty, pretty poor. Also, he needs cards that can interact on turn one, turn zero, you know. Underground these, Sea, yeah. Yeah, these, the, this game lasts so quickly that the spell costs zero, so you have to think about playing it. Land Grant. All right. Street Wraith, Rite of Flame, Manamorphose, Tinder Wall, Desperate Ritual, Lotus Petal, and the namesake card, Go Goblin Char Belcher. Problem with this kind of hand, unlike the last one, is that he completely loses to Force of Evolve. <laughs> just, just loses to it. He's going to try to land Grant the Taiga. And yes, he, he does this before cycling Street Wraith in case he drew the Taiga. Where are you, Taiga? There you are. I, I, I'm curious. Is 
the land, is it Cathedral of Sarah? It might be Cathedral of Sarah. Is that card popular? Well, um, it gives your white legends bands with other legends. And it doesn't tap for mana. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be too good. But, you know, it's not legendary, so you can play multiple of them. Yes, you can, in case I'm removing banding from your creatures, then you can have two of them, so I will have to remove it twice. <laughs> All right, Corbin, okay. now cycling the street rate down to 18. And it looks he like you got a, a right of flame? Sure. So he's going to try to storm up one. Storm is at one, Lotus Petal. I don't think this is going to work at all, by the way. <laughs> I am, if I am Gormonic, I am very tentative about the success rate of this. He's just going to go for the Char Belt. Why has not? To. See, flip, flip a coin. See what happens. Yeah, maybe he doesn't have Days or Force. Or, I mean, the question is, if you want to uh, if you want to go play around the Days, you have to start make five mana before you cast it, which means you're ditching another card. So at that point, you're just dead to Force. Well, let's right just see flame. what happens. Right of Flame. Storms Does it work? Two. Chris says, yep. <laughs> so now, did Chris keep something without a Force here? He has a Spell Pierce. Right of Flame is getting pierced. I don't know if that's enough. <laughs> okay, okay. What do we have left in this hand? We have right of another right. Yep. We have a Manamorphose. So we can write into Manamorphose. Desperate Ritual. So right makes three here. So you can write a Flame, Manamorphose, Desperate Ritual. Tinderwall makes two, right? Yep. Green so to, this to, is to two one. red. So one turns into three turns into three, turns into four, turns into six. It's not the seven he needs, but he does get to draw off the Manamorphose if he wants to try to drop all his cards. Right of Flame. Right of Flame, so three Manamorphose. red, Manamorphose, into a red and a green. What did he, depends what he drew. I can't tell. We're all in suspense now, we don't know. Uh-oh, he's hiding it, he doesn't want you to know. So Storm is now at one, two, three, four, so five for the turn. If, that, if he ends up drawing a Empty the Warrens at some point in here, that'll matter. Desperate, Desperate Ritual. Six. He now has four mana in his mana pool. Char Belcher. Plus Char Belcher. That's seven. And he's now that that resolves, he's just going to pass the turn. Thought sees. Ouch. Another Char Belcher and a Tinder Wall. He's going to take the Tinder Wall. He's got to take the Tinder Wall. Bye-bye, Tinderwall. All right, if Corbin can get up to three... This, I, I think Chris Funk's going to lose this game. <laughs> Corbin's going to get to three leads eventually. He's got he's one right of flame away from winning. Remember. Nope, didn't hit it this turn. Corbin, Corbin... All right, that's, this, this is the fun part. Corbin has to <laughs> win before... Chris has to win before Corbin draws. Nothing to Cor Chris not making a Tarmogoyf here. I would make the Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I, I mean, I think this is the battle uh, of wits problem, right? Waiting well, for I mean, the, does he have a card in Corbin's click in his deck hand or anything? Makes makes uh, mana. Don't be so scared. Do stuff. Well, we'll see. He has Tarmogoyf, Tarmogoyf, Snap, Caster, Mage, and I don't know the fourth card. So I mean, he wants to snap on Spell Pierce is what he's holding wow, up, I he's believe. Chrome Mox. Yeah, but remember, you can't imprint a Char Belcher on a Chrome Mox. Right, so Corbin has to imprint stuff. a real card. Which one gets Spell Pierce means he's gonna get two for one. And no, like, wait, no, no, you can't spell. The, you don't imprint until it's resolved. That's true. Chrome Mox does it resolve. Can't let that resolve. Oh, it's really hard to say. Imprinting. Manamorphose, I believe. Yep, the thing doesn't make mana, so sure, get it out of here. And there's a Surgical Extraction in Chris Funk's hand. I don't know if that matters at all. I don't like how passive Chris is being here. Well, Corbin's, Corbin has a lot of cards that make one mana. Chris needs to invest. Oh, he imprinted a spirit. Oh, a spirit guide. He's got a Manamorphose in his hand, then. He imprinted a spirit guide. That doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't you just try to win with the spirit uh, maybe guide? Maybe he doesn't have a Manamorphose. Maybe I saw it that's, wrong. That's, that can't be, a, can't be a spirit guide. That makes no sense. I'm not sure. All right, Tarmogoyf down for Chris Funk. He has a way to try to win. Can he get Corbin Rudnick below 18? <laughs> Okay, yeah, Simeon Spirit Simeon's Guide. All right, guide. sure. Okay. I don't understand that. Then maybe that's his only colored spell. In which case, I would just wait. Right? Artifact, sorcery, instant you can't creature, the land. Spirit Guide being removed. So that's a, that's a five power Tarmogoyf. I don't remember. It's a, a Mahamodi Jin, right? That was our, what we came yeah, up with. Yeah, Mahamodi Jin. It doesn't fly, so. Fat Modi. Uh, Jataxian Probe for Corbin Rodnick. Sure, did you get a land? Mana Source? Mana Source? Manasaurus uh, should do it. Surgical extraction. 
Mana source wins, right? Uh, well, he's got spell pierce. Yeah, but all he has to do is activate the Belcher. It has to be an actual mana source. So it has to be like, like a, a spirit guide would work. Right, a spirit guide would work. That's why, that's why I don't understand why a spirit guide's on the Mox. Well, I'm with you. Okay. Remember, Corbin just started playing last month. Okay, that's fair. Magic can be a difficult game if you just started playing. Yeah. All right, Corbin's knocked down to 11. I remember my first month, Iron Root Tree Folk was one of my favorite cards. Oh, I just played perfectly my first month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's, and end step, he's going to go for it. He's going to char Belcher him on end step. Oh, and he's got another spear guide? Yeah, no, he had the spear guide. He was just waiting until end step and Corbin <laughs> running. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Playing Goblin Char Belcher oh, makes it to the finals. How frustrating. Oh, wow. Good game, says Corbin. Wow. All right, so we have a Goblin Char Belcher. He has not, Corbin Rennick has not dropped a game in the top eight yet. Not running Force of Will. He's running Counterspell. It's true. So the budget aspect of Smurf Oak deck would 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 really matter in that matchup. It would it would be that point where you'd be like, man, I wish I had Force of Will. This is still game one. Engineered explosives at two. Okay, so let's recap. We're gonna get life totals here in a second. Oh wow, a, a pointless uh, days there. And Matt taking two damage to be able to immediately blow up the world for two. And Joe Gebhardt losing all of his creatures. Trinket Mage in. All right, so Matt clawing his way back into this, and it looked like Joe Gebhardt has run out of resources this game. He just has days left in his hand. So let's recap the board for those of you listening. Uh, Joe, as at 21 life, has four islands and a cavern of souls, and played just a lone days in his hand and a stocked graveyard. It looks like a lot of stuff has been killed. Matt with six lands in play, a Trinket Mage, and a now Jace the Mind Sculptor. So oh, I actually, yeah, that's. Oh boy. All right, Matt looking, seeming to have, have locked up the first game. I would say, um, despite the fact that Joe Gebhardt has a Cavern of Souls and uh, Matt Huey has only one Dust Bowl to answer it, I, I think that this is done. Oh, well, certainly. Is that a Dust Bowl? He does have the Dust Bowl, all right. Is it already out? Uh, not out, but it is in the deck. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 as I said. Yeah. No, I was just looking at the deck list. That's, uh, we don't see Dust Bowl very often, but I do like the card. Counter spell and Daze in Joe Gebhardt's hand. Mistress Factory. There we go. All right, a right there we go. And a counter spell in <laughs> counter spell in Joe's hand, not going to help against Jace. End of the turn. Click. I think he's going to click himself. That's what I would do. That's I think, I think it's going to get countered. Sure. Boom. Okay. Take it. That's a. Is that a Mirage counter spell? Uh, not Mirage. I, think it's uh, Tempest. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. It is Tempest. And batter spell, batter spell. Yeah, that might he may he may have been baiting out the counter spell. <laughs> and uh, you can see the vampire germ there. And he leaves the card there. Remember again, this is a double mulligan for Matt. No, Matt, is he from your area? Uh, Matt Hoey, no, uh, Matt is from, I think he's from the Chicagoland area. Okay. All right, so oh, Matt yeah, Hoey we takes... Heard, we yep. did hear that before. He's from Chicago. I mean, I know I've seen him in plenty of Midwest events. Yes, But definitely. I wasn't sure if he was from yeah, I, uh, Minneapolis or from Chicago. I played him in Legacy at the Grand Prix in Indianapolis. He is a seasoned Esper Stoneblade player. We played in the last round of day one. So both of oh, us were 7-1 cool. uh, at the time. And you can see over there, Ruin Bressler making a brief appearance behind Joe Gebhardt. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan with Matthias Hunt. This is the semi-final match between Matt Hoey with Esper Stoneblade and Joe Gebhardt with a budget merfolk list. Matt is up one game to zero after a double mulligan. He recovered off of the um, strength of cards like um, Jace the Mind Sculptor, Engineered Explosives, which he trinket maged for. And we're going into game two. Joe Gebhardt it looks like his sideboard options for this kind of matchup are 
one spell pierce. We've said it before. Just one spell pierce. He could potentially bring in Pything Needle, but I don't know how I feel about that. However, Pything Needle, I mean, it stops a Jace, it stops uh, yeah, Engineered Explosives. it's a little more alive here than it was last yeah, time. Yeah, a little bit more alive. Um, Mass deck's a little bit slower, I think, than the one that Gephardt faced last round. Possibly it's a good sign, and he may still want to stay on his own plan, though. One thing, they've been able to see each other's deck lists. Um, Joe Gephardt knows that there are no sweep cards in Matt's deck except for the Engineered Explosives, which unfortunately for him, with the um, number of Lords he has that cost two, yeah, that with, actually with Merfolk, is a big deal. Especially moving to a more two-drop based deck, the uh, Engineered Explosives will become better and better against it. In the sideboard, Matt Hoey has a Terminus, another Engineered Explosives, a Zealous Persecution, which can do a small little touch of work if he gets it at the right moment. Given that there are two more games to go here, should Joe win it? Um, I, I think Matt has the edge here just from a percentage standpoint. Yeah, I mean, this, this, is, even a, this is a decent enough matchup for Matt. He has two games to win one. I, I, I like Matt to win this. I'm kind of sad. I was, I was rooting for Joe. Yeah. It's not over yet, though. I mean, one of the things, it isn't over until we've shuffled, presented, and played out the game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Joe's still got to be really, really psyched about how this has been playing out for him. Uh, as you were saying before, you know, all smiles last round. I'm having a great tournament. Oh, totally. Absolutely. All right, so. Um, well, in Mastic, so when we say Esper Stoneblade, maybe we should clarify a little bit. A lot of time you would expect to see Lingering Souls coming out. He's actually not playing Lingering Souls. Uh, the black cards in his deck, it's more of a classical take on, Esper, on the Esper Stoneblade deck. Um, black is just for just for Inquisition of Kozilek and Thoughtseize. Uh, every, otherwise, it is a straight... In the main, in the main deck, it's just for that. Uh, it does, you also then get Parish. Uh, yeah, Parish, an extra Thoughtseize, Extirpate out of a Nile spell bomb out of the board along with a zealous persecution but mostly mostly this is a blue white deck with just a, a, a few black cards in it he's not it's not on like the intuition souls plan and Matt Hoey um, I mean let's pretend that he has a a for the sake of argument, let's pretend that he had even a slight disadvantage, which I think that you're arguing pretty effectively that he does not. Even if he had that, he still is, from a purely math perspective, has a strong edge here. And if we just imagine that Joe Gebhardt had a 60% chance to win games two and three, which is probably an exaggeration in, in a long way, that would still put Matt Hoey almost a two to one favorite for this match. Yeah. So, uh, Joe Gebhardt shuffling, Matt Hoey shuffling. I normally don't say this, but uh, I, I have to say that I'm not rooting for the Merfolk in this game, primarily because I want to see this smiling Matt Hoey play against Belcher and see if he can keep smiling. Sure. I mean, he actually seems fairly well positioned. I think, I think if you're the Belcher player, you're cheering for Merfolk to win here. In this case, in this, this case, is unusual, unusual but true. But I think this is true. He doesn't, one guy doesn't have force of you know, I'm actually not sure if uh, Corbin Rudnick would be cheering for either of these players in general, because if he is a, a very new player, probably has he no might idea. not have any idea about how the metagame usually works. He probably knows for that force of will in these cards exist. I don't know if he'd be able to place them all in decks without seeing deck lists. But he does see the deck lists. The cool part about Belger is you really don't have to care about what your opponent's doing.
All right, so we have turn one Inquisition of Kozilek from Matt Hoey. Seize a hand of all lands and two lords from Joe Gebhardt. You know, for Melling to six, Matt's gotta be pretty happy with this. I guess there's two Mishra's factories in there. He's going to have to deal with those, but fairly uh, not not that hard to deal with. He takes the Master of the Pearl Trident. Goodbye, oh. Master. Yeah. And turn two, Joe. Mishra's factory says go. <laughs> okay, another discard spell. Shows him a phantasmal image and the marrow regery. Take that, Regery. Go. Right, only so one yeah, land. Only, from only that. one land. Just the one land, so you may get beaten oh, down. Yeah, that boy. Coral Hump Commander. Coral Murfo or Coral Hump Commander. Yeah. If only it were Coral Murfolk. Yes, um, yes. I keep saying Coral Murfolk, but I mean Coral Hump Commander. Commander now down. Uh, force, force of will. It. Sure. Is no spell pierce available. Goodbye, spell pierce isn't commander. in his hand yet. He just now he's just left with image, which he can actually image a Mishra's factory if he really wants to. Another island. Oh, time to start beating him up with lands. I think. Activates Mishra's no, factory. No, you don't activate it off the of Mishra's factory. That's no. Pump it with the. Unless well, he's gonna image it, he might image it. Tax for two. Sure. Take two. I'm assuming we have Phantasmal Image coming down here then. I hope so. I hope That'd so. be Other, cool. Otherwise, he's, otherwise he missed a point of damage. Takes two. There we go. Is it my turn? Is it your turn? I'm, uh, what happens if I copy this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you target my Phantasmal Image, which is a Mishra's Factory okay, and he's, he's just passing the turn. Okay, so Matt, what Matt, he didn't miss a damage there for Matt. Then then Inquisition coming down from Matt Hoey, going to get the Phantasmal Image. All right, so now Matt just needs to wait. He needs some, he needs a Wasteland. And he's got a Jace and a Snapcaster in his hand. And Silvergill Adept is in Joe Gebhardt's hand. He can't cast it for two. He doesn't have a, oh, he's casting it for five. All right. Five mana silver galad up. Not exactly a mall drifter, but you know, actually works in this situation. He draws Ether Vial. Yeah, just in time. Matt passes back. Oh, it was a pretty boy. that's a pretty soft, soft keep it's looking like, or it's a keep that's really not working out. Phantasmal image on Silver Girl Adept? Nope. <laughs> Six damage, here they come. Alright, Matt's gonna drop down to ten. Phantasmal image? Oh, he leaves the counter spell open, that's fine with me. Yeah. Snapcaster Snap coming down. That's going to get counterspelled immediately. I'd or, counterspell it. I don't know if I well, would. It's just ambush Yeah, it's just, it's just, there's nothing in the graveyard. I'd let it happen. Sure. Have it take, yeah, actually just, just let it happen. Alright, nope, he's gonna counter spell. He wants the uh, yeah, six no, damage. That's that's defensible. I'm fine. There's with nothing it, yeah. wrong with it. I've got no problem with either path. I think I would let it happen just because I mean I've already got a, a pretty solid clock afterwards. You mean you want to counter this Stoneforge Mystic? <laughs> yeah, for example. Yeah. I mean, I, I just I still see the clock there. The typical way that you run the aggro control deck is you don't care yeah. about things that make that don't stop your clock. Right, and, the, and that, and this, that this Mystic batter can skull. do it. There, this bad poss potential batter skull or potential Gta is going to do it. He's going to grab Gta. Yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah, oh, he's going to drop to a perilously low life total. But if he can, if he can stabilize here, it'll be great. Um, I believe Joe Gebhardt has a phantasmal image in the hand, which means he can copy the Stoneforge Mystic and get his own Gta if he sees it. Drops another Muta Vault. One, two. Activate Muta Vaults. All right. Apparently, might not see it. They're both are factories. Remember, they're factories. factories. I, I know. On, I know. Uh, the yeah. assumption you'd expect to see Muta Vaults here, but they are not. They are Mishra's factories. You did That's not have six the Muta Vaults coming today. in. Makes it seven. Comes one already. Catches the pump. That's seven. Matt Hoey down to two. Can he pull out of it? He has a line. Okay, it's just an Aether Vial. There is no image. Okay, I thought there was an image in his hand. 
Uh, what is he putting in? Does he have the batter spell in his hand? He might he already must, have, he the must have, have. He must have the batter spell in hand. That's the only Regery. thing that makes sense here. Is Joe Gebhardt going to attack into the batter skull? Let's pretend that the batter skull happens. So it's not enough. It's not enough to survive. Nope, you can just swing right through it. Yeah. As long as he just activates all those mistress factories, it's not enough unless Joe, or sorry, unless, unless Matt has, has something else. Yeah. Don't cast anything, Joe. Just just activate and go. Yeah. It's all the eggy wags. It might be a little scary. He's going to activate just oh, two. Just two doesn't quite do it. That all does right. not quite do it. Oh, and Matt could not be happier boy. about this. Joe had the Joe had the chance to win there, but it's not gonna happen. Boom. That was a big one. Yeah, that was that's, a, that was uh, a big maybe one. Maybe Joe realized it now. Yeah, if he activates the third factory, the game's his here. But now, now, now I think it's it's gonna be out of reach for him. Uh, pump, pump, thun blocked one, but that's it's only gonna deal go one. to one, and then the batter the batter cell's gonna swing back. Yep, and that'll be it. Yep. I mean, honestly, at that point, it's better just to let him be at two and cast the Regery. Sure. I mean, the, 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 there's this problem, too. The, the GTA is coming down. He's hitting for... That's it. Yeah, this is... That's it. Okay. Boo, hiss, boo. All right. So two counters on the GTA for Matt Hoey. He's at one now. He moves from one life up to five. Uh, two GTA counters. Joe with only two factories and an adept in play. Joe draws days. That's not going to do anything. Joe actually doesn't really have a way to get Batter Skull off this board. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, contemplating here. He wants to play the Regery. And do go ahead and do that. In response, we're probably going to get to see a murdered Silver Gill adept. And we are trying to quiet down even more at this point, despite the fact that our players are across the room. They can hear us a little bit. Right, so we're, we'll move mics a little bit closer, be a little bit quieter. And here we go. Okay, so we have, yep, in response to the Regery coming down, Matt Hoey's going to destroy, the, get rid of the Silver Gill adept. Gita goes down to one counter. Still on the bat, on the germ token. Uh, Joe was hand, ether vile days. No, no real game in it. Uh, this should be over in a couple turns. Uh, swings in with the batter skull token. And if there's no block, he's probably gonna pump here. And pretty much right now with with Matt, where it's all over but the crying for Joe Gebhardt. Days. Okay. Had cracks the fetch land, flood strand, finds the land to pay for the Jace. Okay. All right. So we all right. We have uh yep uh another regery from Gebhardt. Um, he's down to ten. So now you have ten to ten. He's gonna activate both factories. Swing in. Uh, the better skull token is going to block one of them. And yeah, there's there's no real out for it. The germ has vigilance. So Jace will go down to two. Just go down to three. Sorry. And then Joe's gonna, yeah, Joe will scoop it up here. Matt Hoey defeats Joe Gebhardt two games to zero, moves on to the finals, pulls that one out. Um, Joe, <laughs> gotta still be happy with his run here. In the top four, Legacy Open, probably, yeah. you know, 
putting Probably. throwing together a deck, you've got to be really happy about this. Home Vault would be the ob obvious one to go with, but I don't think that Joe has him. His original line is said that he was playing around to go for the throat, but, uh, you know. <laughs> um, also, TS2, so is the Man Maze, two Cavern of Souls, four Mistress Factories, and 13 Islands. Now, there's a missing a missing element there um, also. I, I brought this, uh, this up to one of my friends, uh, Ian DeGraff, out there in the Magic Universe, a old school kind of, uh, you know, legacy guy, and he said, no wastelands, what? No wastelands. Joe's Joe's not playing wastelands in his deck either. He's uh, very heavy on creatures, which actually I think gives him a decent a decent advantage in this matchup. You know, and uh, Ian said, and I loved this, that, you know, yeah, computers and college degrees are expensive, but they're also useful. So Gebhardt with the higher seed will get to win the dial, and he starts on the turn one Aether Vial exactly Aether what he Aether Vial is such an amazing card for mer Merfolk. Being able to save your mana for your disruption and have your spells, your creatures come down, uncounterable, very, very powerful. Excellent in this matchup. Well, especially since Alex is on a hybrid of Stoneblade and Countertop, that really gets around the Countertop aspect of it. Alex got to be really disappointed that he wasn't able to force that. Yeah, and uh, pretty much he's going to have to rely on uh, a very small amount of creature removal. Island in order to, to so Island out of Joe, I, for, 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 Island out of Alex. Then another Island out of Joe playing Silvergill Adept, revealing Master of the Pearl Trident. His uh, after battle goes up to one. Civil Go Adept is going to resolve Joe with a... <laughs> and Joe with a flourish. flourish. Go. Go and draws the card. Um, Alex really on a back foot here. Remember, Alex does have Terminus. He can set up like a miracle Terminus, and that's how he's going to have to deal with Joe's spells, or Joe's creatures. But um, Also of note with Joe's land, it looks like they're all just kind of random lands. So uh, he, oh, he maybe really follows yeah, like, the, he's got old, the, all Matthias, old card the Matthias Hunt school of land. Yeah, yeah. The ones you, whatever you play test with, you have to play with. He's keeping Spell his fierce. ether vial. He kept his ether vial on one there. It looked like. It looked like he did that on purpose. Yep. He pointed to it and said, "Nope." And it looks like his hand is all lands. Spell pierce and lands. So he keeps ether vial at one, plays a third island, and attacks with Silvergill Adept, putting Alex down to. Oh no no sorry it went up to two. It went oh, up okay, to two. Okay good good good. Flash and he's gonna flash in Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Okay you had me convinced that was like wow what's yeah, his play? That. Yeah curse catcher. Um, no, so he's in it for three. He's going to try Silver Girl Adept in for three. This puts uh, Alex at 17 and puts him on a four-turn clock. Yeah, Alex has got to be wary of swords in here. He doesn't doesn't want to get spell pierced. A four-turn clock at worst. Alex's deck, uh, sorry, Joe, Joe's deck has all of the Merfolk Lords. All of them. Coral yes. Helm Commander, Master of the Pearl Trident, Lord of Atlantis, Mirror Regery, all of them. And, and then he's running Phantasmal, Phantasmal image. image on top of it. So third land is a Misty Rainforest from Alex. Alex has not made a play yet, but currently facing a damage which will strike him down to 11, 10 after his fetch line. He's going to have to make a move here eventually. Uh, Ether Vial ticks up to three. Despite there was a Master of the Pearl Trident in Joe's hand, Joe ticked it up to three. It's a little curious there. I don't think he has a Regery in his hand. Well, we'll see. Maybe he has a, we'll a secret Regery hanging out. Oh, they're... That's a master. That's for, a master. Island. Spell so Pierce. So both of us swing in for... Uh, sorry, just for five. Master does not pump himself. Take five. So Alex drops to 12. Master Pierce Island is Joe Gebhardt's hand. Go with the flourish. That one may, must not be island. They would have played an island. Alex is going to attempt to end step brainstorm. See if he's, he wants to bait out a Pierce here. Yeah, Joe did not play an island. Didn't feel the need to. Joe's debating whether or not he wants to pierce it. Definitely putting on a towel that says he, uh, you know, has a Pierce. So Alex, Alex not uh, doing two anything lands to reveal a Terminate there. Remember, or sorry, Terminus there. Remember, with a card like Brainstorm, you do have to, if you want to invoke the miracle effect essentially make some way of revealing while you're doing that, that that's the Alex. first one. All right, puts, yeah, and there we go. Terminus, here was put a Terminus from his hand on top of his deck, so he's gonna Terminus here. Joe's gotta be a little upset that um, there's his Ether Vials on three right now. I can't imagine he's happy about that. So Alex, revealing the Terminus first. So gonna catch out a cast it with Spell Pierce mana up. Are you gonna, are you gonna spend the mana, says Joe? I assume so. It's on uh, 
Joe might be asking about it, but still on Alex to make that to happen. To do it. There we go. Terminus. Terminus has happened. Joe is going to pierce it, but the Alex can pay. He might have a daze. I don't think so. He's got him just a master in the land. I'm not sure why he why he's piercing here. Then he just wants to tap out. Tap Alex. him down and then drop a master afterwards. He can't drop it afterward. The vials oh, on, on the no, on, yeah, on, on the next turn. turn. On the next, yeah. he's gonna have to cast it. Yep. Tap him out so he can definitely I think get it so. out. Looking pretty good for Alex here. Uh, yeah, they do look they do look pretty solid. Yeah. And you can see the Star City so. Games uh, vampire sleeves being played by Joe Gebhardt. I believe that's Justin Treadway as the artist. I like those sleeves a lot, actually. They are nice. I do like them. All right, so with that mar the Miracle Terminus. I do think I see a Redry, actually. That's a Redry. He, he does have one. Okay. And the Terminus works. So Goodbye, almost, little fishies. A, a, so a good three for one there by Alex. And now for his turn, he can lay a land and lay an island and pass back. All right. And End of the turn, Reej. Here comes Reegery. So Alex is going to need a second sweeper. So this is going to get brutal quickly. Another, oh, another, another Reegery. Wow. Good. So and Now they've seen each other's deck lists. Uh, Joe can know that Alex only has three Terminus in the main deck. Right. Now the top of Alex's deck is fresh, so if he has another Brainstorm, which I believe he does, he can maybe get another Terminus going. Master of the Pearl Trident comes down for Joe. That'll make the Mirror Regery a 3-3 with Island Walk. Untap this here mm -hmm. island, he says. And in response, what are we going to get from Alex? While with the trig pointing before the while well, the untaps on the stack, but before it's happened, I think he's that is where we are. I think we're looking at another brainstorm. Oh no, sorry, he actually Joe tapped. Oh, the Joe island. tapped the island. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Rejury swings in for three. Mm, Joe might make it for. I don't think he will though. I wouldn't. You can do that next turn. Joe's starting to unstep a Rejury and kill and win game one. So let's see what Alex has to say about that. Remember that the batter skull does nothing due to island walk. That's right. <laughs> wow. Joe Gebhardt here. Looking pretty good. Fetch land down for Alex Beinick. If you uh, notice that we're a little bit quieter with our speech, as this huge convention hall empties, our voices do carry over towards the play, so we're trying to make sure we're a little careful All about right. giving anything away. Alex Benek really needs another another Terminus, yep. or I don't think he's in this at all. A Snapcaster would also um, work if he got up to eight mana. Yes, yeah, or just like a Swords and a Snapcaster. Well, that's fair. That's fetch fair. immediately. Swords. What's he going for? Can't be the the batter skull. That doesn't work. Five is mana. He, he's dead. Making batter skull. That doesn't do anything. He has he's, to basically pray. I think here that yeah, Joe doesn't have got, the Lord. Joe does have the Lord. Yep. And Joe does. Yep. All right. Batter skull down. And that's not going to do anything. Huh? Joe's, Joe's, Joe's like, going to take him. Let one. me just chuck this card out. It looks more expensive than the cards I'm used to. <laughs> And Joe, by the way, wholeheartedly embracing the budget Merfolk title of his deck. Yeah. All right. Well, batter cells down. There's a germ on it, but that's not going to... Don't untap. Don't untap, Joe. Don't do it. Put your Rejury into play if you'd like to win. Okay. Yep. And, <laughs> that's, and it. that's it. Game one goes to Joe Gebhardt. Woo. Trying to make it to the top eight here. Top four. <laughs> now... We have the first game in the books here, but of course there's other kinds of winning that we have happening besides the matches that we see here in front of us. Joe yes, Gaphart wins. you too can be a winner. Alex wins, you can win, and how you do that is by entering under our premium contest. And the contest works like this. Every round between the first game 
And the second game, while they're sideboarding, we give you a trivia question. The prize for the first round's trivia question is three free months of Star City Games Premium. The prize in the semifinals is six free months of Star City Games Premium. And in the finals, the prize after that first game, that trivia question prize, is a Gen Con badge yes. for free entrance to Gen Con for the entire event, a incredible event, the greatest days in gaming for people that like to sit down and play magic, play board games, do all kinds of gaming. It's good times for you. If you can make it, it's well worth it. So, all right. The so way this works. We are going to theme all three of these questions. Three questions. Go ahead. Sorry, one all, at a time. Go oh, ahead. No, they're all going to be about we've uh, kind of a dual thing. You have to know a little bit of Star City history. You're also going to have to hear about the release of From the Vault Realms that has been released. So, our first question we're going to ask you. This one's for three months of Star City pre Premium. Remember, you have to have the hashtag. You have to have the hashtag. SCG on it. Premium, right over there. You can see it. That hashtag is what's required in order to make this work. Okay. What land in From the Vault Realms? Did Max Teets use to win the Baltimore Invitational in his Maverick deck? Hmm. So it's got to be land in Maverick. And look at the spoiler from From the Vault Realms. There's a hmm. specific, uh, you know, not seeing too much play right now in Maverick, but certainly a card that's seen play in Maverick before. Okay. I'm going to add a little hint. If you, right. uh, if because that's a pretty difficult that's question. A pretty difficult I think question, that's a difficult right. question. If you go to my Facebook page, Adrian L. Sullivan, you will find a picture of this on my Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Adrian L. Sullivan. Yeah, and I'm, uh, okay. I feel like that that's a really hard one. I don't that's know. Right. All right, all right. Well, we'll, we'll I, I, think I have faith in people, you know. All right. I am no faithless. Longer, no longer a current staple in Maverick, but it's certainly an older version was of it a, Was it a staple in Maverick back in the day? Good against other Maverick decks. Anyway, let's get well, back let's to our match. let's go back to our match. Yeah. These players are sideboarding. Now, remember, for those of you who are entering that trivia contest, you have to get the question correct, and you have to tweet with hashtag SCG Premium. Hashtag SCG Premium. And sideboarding-wise, we just saw Joseph with uh, the Budget Merfolk deck really beat down against uh, his opponent, Alex Bennett with the Stoneblade list. Terminus was able to clear the board, but pretty much without casting a single counterspell that actually countered anything, Joseph was able to stop, um, you know, any, stop uh, Alex from being able to stymie his Merfolk Assault. From the sideboard, I think what we're gonna see is one spell pierce and that's it. Just one card, I think, is all that's gonna come in. Even though he did see, um, you know, the Batter Skull, I don't think he's going to bother with Pithing Needle. Pithing Needle, no. His main deck is, is what he wants here. He has a Spell Pierce. A lot of his other things, Blue Elemental Blast, Graft Digger's Cage, Lawan, Leyland of the Void, not really things that come in here. So. Um, from the floor, Caleb Durward up a game, Elves versus Bug, and also uh, Dead Guy Ale, Jeff Hoogland, down a game versus Belcher, Corbin right. Rudnick. Caleb, remember, going for the double win this weekend. Well, he wants to make sure that Jerry Thompson is on notice. He won't be the only one anymore. That's his goal. All right, so. <laughs> Joe's shirt is awesome. <laughs> All right, so uh, Alex on the play. Alex has a little bit more, which he can more He has a, a 13 different cards in his sideboard. Um, he has a, a path to exile to complement his swords to plowshares, which I imagine we'll be seeing. He um, also has an, an extra force of will and an extra terminus, which could all be brought in. This is still a creature matchup. It's a little bit of a difficult matchup for him because those spells can be countered. I, think, I, I he think, should, think we see all of those coming. I think he should bring them all in. Yep. I think he brings in humility. Yep, quite possibly humility. Um, Ba cards like Batter Skull, not as good here, I, I don't think. Uh, the fact that there's eight Lord of Atlantis effects basically means that stuff's, that uh, things aren't blockable, and Batter Skull, I, in my opinion, is the second Batter Skull is just too slow. He doesn't actually have, sorry, he doesn't, he actually, my mistake, he doesn't have a second Batter and, Skull. And, you know, I just reported to you that uh, Jeff Hoogland had lost game one. He's just lost game two. <laughs> So, um, in that little bit of time that I was talking to you before, Belcher took down the next one as well. So I'm sorry to tell you that we won't be able to get to Belcher because it's already over. That means that uh, Corbin Rudnick with Belcher wins 2-0, moving on to our semifinals. One of the things I do love about Belcher 
it sure does take matches down quick. Yeah, the uh, Belcher, yeah, not, and we were joking we were gonna put that one on camera because then we get to see two full matches. I mean, I've definitely seen Belcher players finish while their opponents were resolving mulligans. I mean, while their while their table partners, people at the same table were resolving mulligans. All right, so. Alex gonna be on the play here. Um, he's gotta, after, I mean, He's got to make sure that Aether Vial doesn't resolve. That's really, I think, one of the first steps to hear for him. The thing about Aether Vial, it just represents so much mana. And yeah. the well, instant ability to flash in at inopportune times, it's just a devastating effect for a control deck to deal with. And we have the game beginning Island from Alex Benek. Island. Curse Catcher or Aether Vial? Aether Vial, does it work? Again, can he pierce it? Can he force it? No. No, that, that, oh, that's very boy. bad for him. What are his answers to Aether Vial? Once it's down, he's going to have to race it. Once it's down, it looks like his answer is probably not in the deck. Energy Flux, Pything Needle, Oblivion Ring. These are presuming he sideboards these cards in, which he might not. Second Island from both players. The Aether Vial up to one. And passes back, Alex right, Benek. So both players with just double island in play. Uh, with Alex, you, I, don't, I don't like this keep from him. I'm not sure what, he, what he's keeping it based on, but I don't, I, I'm not a fan. Flooded Strand from Alex Benek. We're going to see activation of Aether Vial. Any responses? Maybe a Vendillion no, click? I'm put in a Curse Catcher. All right. So, this is, all these Morphos are going to oh, come out hey. uncounterable now on end steps. Up to two. There's a Cavern of Souls. souls. So nothing's getting <laughs> countered here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you know, for those of you who have been told that it's just too hard to even put together the budget deck, you know what? You can go even more budget with the budget deck and just get rid of those expensive spells. Get rid of Wasteland. Sure. Get rid of Mutable. Get rid of Force of Will. Just play Island. Just, just Island. If you have some caverns from your standard deck, throw those in there. Right? <laughs> All right. Third land. Yeah, third land down member. He has a bunch of possible plays here. Joe can commit a little harder to the board. He doesn't have to worry about things getting countered. He attacks for one with a smile on his face. He's just, he is all smiles about this top eight. <laughs> he's got a Coral Helm Commander in his hand. And he's going to flash uh, in Murphy That with looks the like a Master of Pearl Master? Trident. The Cavern, the is, cavern naming elves. is naming elves. <laughs> I wonder if he'll end up regretting that at some point. Why would you do that? That actually matters. Yeah, it does Why matter. Why would you name elves? Because he's gloating a this little bit. This is awesome. I think. Okay, sure. <laughs> Joe is just having having the time of his life in this top eight. I, I, you know, honestly, when people do that, I do kind of hope. Watch that they, out! Yeah, I mean, that something happens them, to they him can, for it. They can go all the way if that happens. You know, <laughs> like it might have been okay to name uh, I don't know shapeshifter. Sure, but elf. All right, all right. He has. I mean. I guess there's there's no way to blow up the the Aether Vial. I guess he's just totally committed to casting everything off Aether Vial. And he flashed in Lord of Atlantis there. So it has a, ma a Master of the Pearl Trident, a Lord of Atlantis, a, a Coral Helm Commander in hand, plenty of stuff. All right. Brainstorm by it from Alex Finnick, Finnick and cracking the, the flooded strand. And you know, Alex, especially, I think he's got to just make sure when he keeps these hands in stack, he's not keeping things that fold to an ether vial. And I feel like the hand he kept really just did. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I know with old school goblins, with old school merfolk, I've played a lot of control and legacy over the last couple of years. You have to have a plan for the vial, or it's just going to run you over. Yeah, so he's going to now swords the, the, the Lord of Atlantis, and that's going to get spell pierced. Pierce. No, thank you, swords. All right, so Binek takes two. Mm -hmm. 
a wasteland, right, wasteland from Alex Benek. Yeah, now I can make those elves counterable again. All right, <laughs> Alex is gonna have to stop uh, the damage going on though. This is four damage a turn right now. So it is. Uh, Alex does have a Stoneforge Mystic in hand, which he's not casting of note. That's a different plan. I'm not sure he has a Jace in hand, Stoneforge Mystic. Um, possibly a Terminus. I'm not sure. Maybe he's trying to take a little more damage and get Joe to commit a little harder before maybe Brainstorm setting up a Terminus. I'm not positive. In comes four damage. Yeah, maybe more. You might see a Master of the Pearl oh, Trident okay. get vialed in here. Master number two. And Snapcaster, Snapcaster comes down. That's going to go for a Swords. If he gets it, the Snapcaster can block, can then block Curse Catcher as well. I mean, Joe will probably violin Master the Trident to not let that happen. But so just Master and Coral Helm in Joe Gebhardt's hand. There's I a think third Joe looks like he's in trouble, trouble, actually. Yeah, he might. He's slowly losing control of this game. All right, we're gonna Swords the Lord of Atlantis. All right. Now and works. Joe gains two life. Could have been three. Probably doesn't matter, but it might. And before, Alex is going to see if he can move to blocks, and he's going to block it. Wow. That's Joe shouldn't let that happen. I don't think. I don't think I so. Put, I would have put the Master of the Pearl Tridents into play there. Maybe uh, what Joe was trying to do here is just use it end of turn, put a Coral Helm Commander into play, then on his turn put a Master into play and level up the Coral Helm Commander. Sure, I do like that plan. Um, I don't know, I still think I'd want to push the damage. I agree. All right, he passes. There's the Coral Helm Commander. Coral Untap. Leave it at two. Draw. Draws another island, so his hand is island, just island master. I think there may be a third card in there. I think there's, yeah, there's a third card in there hiding. We're not sure which what it is. Level, level. Yeah, well, four levels. Level it all the way, right? Level, level. And level. Yep, yeah, and when the fourth level comes down, he's gonna path it. I mean. Alex just knocking away one at a time yeah. all of Joe's creatures. I really think that uh, Joe allowing the Snapcaster to block a huge deal. Um, there could be an island walking 2-2 two -two hitting him right now. For a second time, so I put Alex at 13. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I do think that's a play you need to make. Sad times for Coral Helm Commander as he is removed from the game and finds an island. That's one of my favorite islands you just put into play. For those of you who are just joining us, this is the second game of the top eight of the Legacy Open. It's the quarterfinals. I'm Adrian Sullivan with Matthias Hunt. You can see Alex Benek, a member of the US national team this year, down a game against Merfolk. This is a budget Merfolk list. No Force of Wills, no Wastelands, no Mutavolts, but it has made it all the way through eight rounds of Swiss to be in this top eight. And Joe will pass back. Uh, Alex now, I think finally, now that he has Joe tapped out, is going to go for a uh, Stoneforge or a Jace. Stoneforge comes into play. Uh, he just needs to set up a GTA. Alex at a healthy 17 in command of this game. Yeah, Alex looks like he's well in charge of it. Right, I'm gonna go with the batter skull, sure. Actually, I don't like that. Um, you can overwhelm a batter skull with, with Merfolk. Yeah, Merfolk can deal damage faster than a batter skull that can can gain life, but I don't think you can overwhelm a GTA. Yeah, I don't think you can overwhelm a GTA at all. Yeah. Sensei's divining top. 
And Alex with a Terminus in hand, all it takes is one Brainstorm to set that Terminus up if it comes to that. Or one Jace that is also in his hand. So end step, Joe's gonna put down the Master of the Pearl Trident. All right, Joe's on his last volley of creatures. If Alex can deal with these, I, I don't think Joe can reload. Two gonna islands reload. in Joe's hand, jeez. Ooh, so he's bringing it up to three now. And this is the kind of point where you really kind of wish the cavern wasn't on elves. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the play was really sweet, so. Yeah, it was, it was sweet in a... Oh, no, that's uh, great. Kind of Is that a Mistress Factory? How lucky. Oh, man. Not a Mutavolt, so it's still going to be blocked. It won't actually be able to swing past Batter Skull. He's pointing his master at the Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah. Let's fight. No, the game doesn't work that way. You can't attack someone else's creatures. You have to attack them. Yeah, this is not uh, Battle Tech or oh. a few other games. Yeah. Alex will top here. Two fetches and a force of will. Not a very good hand at all. A top a top at all. He doesn't take a fetch because and then get rid of the rest of those and try again. Fetch land. Go. And a turn, nothing. Nothing. Joe doesn't have anything. And he draws another factory? Nothing, nothing. Carry the nothing. More nothing. I believe it's another factory. Man, it's a shame those things aren't merfolk. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, second factory, but no plays in there. Here comes Batter Skull into play for Alex Pinnock. So that's gonna that's gonna be pretty strong here. Uh, he's in, he cracked a fetch there to get to clean the top of his library off. Remember, Alex also with a wasteland for any potential factory shenanigans that would happen. He has a Jace and a Terminus in hand. Alec is in control. Can you make out what kind of art that is? I know it's a germ token, but what is uh, the art? Brainstorm, brainstorm. Uh, is that humility? Yeah, brainstorm, brainstorm, humility. That's pretty good. I don't even need, want to cast the humility right now, though, I don't think. Actually, interesting. Humility makes uh, makes the batter skull a 5 5, right? That's right. Now, equipment works with humility in that you still get the bonus from it, correct? I believe so. Okay. Mistress Factories are still two twos under a humility. A Goku apparently is what that art that's is. Dragon Ball Z. Right? I, I don't know what Gokus are, yeah, so I think that's Dragon apologies. Ball Z. And humility. All right. Ouch. Well, we all have one ones now. Well, did, did that helps the germ token. Now it's a yep. five five. With Vigilance and Lifelink. Equipment is a marvelous thing. All right, I'm not sure how layering works, so I'm gonna, we're going to reference this over here to our, our L2, our judge here, helping us explain just what... Okay. <laughs> Humility came down second, so right now it is a 1-1. One, one. Despite the... Mo now, if he moves the batter... Uh, if he moves the batter skull, that will change this fact makes so little sense to me. So right now, uh, we're gonna pause for a moment while we wait to see that that germ is tapped. Because if, yeah, the judge is reading it now. This is why we don't print cards like Humility anymore. I miss cards like this Humility. Is, humility the humility is probably the single the card of cause, the single most, like largest section of the rule book has come about as, you know, it's one of the worst, from a judge's point of view, it's probably one of the worst cards they've ever printed. Uh, you know, there's, yeah. We're waiting to find out uh, how so this is So I'm done. not going to be able to, I know we're going to... Joe Gebhardt says, you know what, I don't even care what the ruling is, I'm just I'll scooping. just scoop. Okay, about, thank you, Joe. Not, uh, Sporting not guy. Pay attention to that stuff. Um, so yeah, scoop. I'm not going to try to explain why things are certain size under humility, because I'll do it wrong, and then I'll get a Twitter storm at me, and... I'm not um, a judge. Talk to I, your judge. I, I don't know either. Uh, the, the judge that we uh, have telling us says that the second 
um, thing coming down was humility, so therefore it has precedence. So if you were to move the batter skull, but I, I don't really know how that works. Yeah. Um, um, I apologize. Every, Normally in my if, situation as a player, I would go like this. I just call it a judge. What yeah, I just call a judge. I, I don't on? actually know how this works. All right, so going into game three, Joe will be back on the play. Joe's had, um, yeah, he still he wants to make sure he gets the turn one ether vials going on. Um, match can go both ways. Joe needs to make swords and cards like swords are very important. Joe needs to make sure he's pushing damage early because he will lose control of the game as we move as we keep going. Okay, bad news for you Caleb Durward fans. Chris Funk has defeated Caleb Durward. Um, turn one, Caleb lays a Llanowar off. Turn one, Chris Funk dark blasts it. Caleb concedes. Really? That Quote, seems... Caleb Durward, I can't beat a dark blast. I've never beaten a dark blast with this deck. Right. Well, so Caleb's Caleb's attempt at going two for two is, has been taken down. Jerry Thompson gets to still be the sole sole possessor of that honor. Uh, so we have Chris Funk now in the top eight, top four. He'll be playing against Corbin Rudnick. So we'll have Belcher versus Bug in the top four. Still waiting on the matchup between uh, Matt Hoey and Grant Wilkinson. Last we checked, uh, well, actually, I don't have any results from those two yet, so. We'll keep you updated as they come in. Both players still shuffling here. So right now, in the other bracket, our top four is Belcher versus Bug. Yep, and on this side we have this match up here going to game three. We also have an Esper Thule playing the winner. We have Matt Hoey playing Esper Stormblade. Stoneblade versus Grant Wilkinson playing Storm. Um, keeping in mind that, Al that uh, Grant Wilkinson and Alex Binnick both haven't, along with Caleb Durward, were all undefeated entering this top eight. All of them came in with six wins and two draws. All right. All smiles here, really cordial okay. match. And excellent. actually, now we've got our results in. Matt Hoey with Esper Stoneblade wins 2-0 two zero two versus zero over Storm. The Storm deck. So yeah, um, you know, the blue deck's pretty good against combo decks. So we have two of our undefeated players are down. Will the third one go down too? We'll see if uh, if Joe Gebhardt pulls us out, then we'll have all no more players undefeated in the tournament. So far, being the higher seeded player, it's been a little no, never mind. That's, that's not true. If I'd make a comment, it does not hold up. But so Delver versus Belcher versus Bug, Stoneblade Esper Stoneblade versus winner of this match. Joe Gebhardt looks like he's having a lot of fun. He's uh, happy to be here from what I gathered. Uh, you talked to his friends and him earlier tonight? Yeah, I was uh, outside last round and I was talking with some of his friends outside and you know, they were they were just having a gas that he was in the top eight. Said he's gonna hold this one over him over them for quite a while. Uh, he, he came in. <laughs> you, you said know, I couldn't do it. They actually they're talking. They said that they had force of wills they could have lent him, but he didn't ask. <laughs> he just he was leaving up a deck and decided, oh, I, I don't have force of wills. He just leaved up some counter spells and you know, really that's that's kind of the attitude he's taken into this tournament. And he's it's just you can see just all smiles here. <laughs> so. Uh, looks like Alex repairing a broken sleeve here. All right, both players drawing their seventh. See what we're gonna keep here. Joe Gebhardt on the play here. 
very dangerous for Alex as long as Joe has a solid hand. And Alex Pinnock is shipping back. Looks oh like Joe Gephardt's keeping on a seven. We could have a budget merfolk versus Belcher finals. <laughs> Honestly, I think that that's the most likely if, if Merfolk wins this round. It could, I mean. yeah. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, Bug has a pretty good fight against Belcher. Yeah. Uh, Bug is a fourth of Will Duck with a decent amount of counter magic. I think it's going to be, you know, pretty hard for Belcher to get through that. We've never had, I don't believe we've ever had Belcher win a Star City Legacy Open before. I'm pretty sure we haven't, but I'll do a quick check on that. One of those things where I always like to say, when, if Belcher wins a whole Legacy Tournament, I, you know, it's mathematical improbability occurring. All right, cutting Alex on six. Alex looked like he was going to ship back to five. Now looking at it a little harder. Unsure, disappointed to be sure. You can tell it on his face. Yep, he's going back for five. Yikes. So Joe's got to feel good on the play. His opponent's on five in a matchup that's probably good for him. The closest we've had, two years ago, Christian Valenti made it to the semifinals. All right. And that's it. That's the only top eight we've ever had with the Belcher deck. Yep. Well, that's already been matched today. Now, can it be beaten is the question. Well, we will find out. Yeah. <laughs> Five cards for Alex. Uh, that's a pretty. I mean, I think someone should alert. Look. Uh, and and right away, Joe Joe got hard right away with the turn one Aether Vial. Aether Vial, every game. One. And if you look at Joe's hand, it's just full of action. Is it a one lander? It's a one lander. What? Well, oh, I'm no, wrong. I'm no, wrong. No. Okay. Wait. Uh, what you got? Yeah, it is a one-lander. One lander. All right. Okay, now make sure that that uh, Aether Vial goes back down to one. It got bumped when he moved it. So Joe, snap keeping the one land Aether Vial hand. Boy, a force of both. Puts it to two. And Alex with no other plays. That's a Mistress Factory, I think. Yeah, he's got a land in here. Joe, Joe can just go to town. And now, is he saying go? I would just, I would cast one of these twos. They all cost blue-blue. Um, They're all the can, lords. He can put a lord into play and then Phantasmal Image it. He's got one. He does. I don't know if he has caught on. Cut that. Alex draw, passing the turn. Joe, end step. Murph, Lord of Atlantis. And he's going to take his turn. He's just going to keep that thing at two and go for it. Really, really tough keep for Alex. Didn't want to go to four. Phantasmal image down from Joe Gephardt. That's going to copy uh, Lord of... Lord of Atlantis. That could have happened last turn. Yep. <laughs> okay, but you know. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. In for three, maybe four. But it's four. still good this turn. If Alex is on one island, still good this turn. I think we might have a case of end of your turnitis from Joe Gephardt. Yeah. He also has a curse catcher in his hand. He's just not casting. All right, second island from Alex. I I, I think we're already right. He's passing oh, the turn. Yeah. And we're already game it over. is another end of your turnitis. Image. Yeah. Yeah, that would have pumped everybody, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, remember, kids, end of your turnitis kills. Yeah, just because you can play something on their end step doesn't mean you have to play it on their end step. You often tell people to do it because there's often a good reason to do it. And, and Alex, Alex Joe Gephardt wins two up. games to one, is in the top four of wow. our open here. Okay, two to one for budget merfolk. Joe Gephardt, not the only person to be victorious here. Alex Benek, you can see the disappointment in his face. Uh, was that a double or a triple mulligan? 
Uh, just double. Just a double, double mulligan. But I mean, hand. that's still that's still pretty rough when you have a such a archetype disadvantage just to begin with. Not to mention a strategic archetype disadvantage like yeah. this. 